My name is Rose Amador LeBeau. I am president and CEO of CTC. Our mission is to help people through employment and education become self-sufficient. We have a day worker center. We have educational programs so people can get their GEDs. We serve a variety of people, people who've just become unemployed, people who have never worked. We work with homeless people. We work with people who have just gotten out of prison and have to re-enter the workforce. So we're full service. I think it's seeing people make the change, become successful, uh, make that transition, and actually having an impact on people's lives, a positive impact. To see these success stories is what it's all about. Hello, I'm Siwa Billy Rose Amador LeBeau, and I'm here with my co-host, Craig Pasqua, and we are Native Voice TV. Welcome to the show. Well, we have a guest from your neck of the woods, huh? We do. Yes, we do. OCO, John. We have John <laughs> Ballou. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Wado. Wado. Welcome, John Ballou from your Oklahoma Cherokee. Yes, but I'm a local guy. Uh, I was actually born and raised in the Bay Area, but our family, uh, my father's side, are from uh, eastern Oklahoma. Okay, and you so were saying earlier that you have a church named after you, uh, a town named after uh, it's, you. <laughs> well, it's a little kind of a, a community, kind of halfway between Pryor, a little town called Pryor, and Look or uh, Telequa. and it's. It was a, a community that was built in, during the WPA or, or when the government was uh, funding a lot of projects. And uh, there's a little the Cherokee Baptist Church with Baloo. Uh, there's a, a Baloo Cemetery for our family. And uh, there used to be a little Baloo school that was up until uh, the late 50s, early 60s. Wow. And it was a little uh, one through eight uh, country school, one room. You know, and uh, th that's on my father's side. That's uh, where we came from, and uh, real have a, still have a real connection with with that part of the country. And uh, my dad's come full circle. When he he gr came here as a young man uh, to find a better life, it was beautiful country, and we have a little bit of property back there. But you can't make a living at it. It's country, and and so him and my grandfather, my uncle, came out here into California to try to better themselves, but uh, would periodically go back all the time and, and stay in touch with, uh, with the family. And, uh, and I still have a, a real connection with that when I you know, periodically would go back as a child. And, and, uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm guessing your home site didn't have oil on it then. No, we weren't one of the ones that <laughs> my dad had old sage cousins and uh, they were the ones that uh, he would tell me stories about sometimes about when they had money and they weren't used to having money. So when the car would break down or something, and they just leave them by the side of the road and just go <laughs> buy a new one, you know. Yeah, they would go to Barzo, but, uh, which is oh, where really? I was from, and yeah, which is about 20 miles from Pahuska, and they would go buy a Cadillac or something, and they'd get a flat tire. Yeah, be driving it back to the reservation in Pahuska, and the, they get a flat tire and just abandon it and walk back to the reservation. Yeah, really? Oh yeah. my goodness. <laughs> uh, but that that wasn't our family, so <laughs> like so many of us. And you still have family back there? Yes, I still have a lot of uh, cousins and uh, uncle. I have a, uh, one immediate uncle, and then um, a lot of cousins and, and second cousins and everything, and and. Uh, from my grandmother's side of the family too, they, they were Downings, and there's a big Downing contingent back there. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Well, that's uh, pretty close to my neck of the woods yeah. as well. Um, I know my mother's side was at Piney, which uh -huh. is over by Jay Grove, that area. Oh, okay. And from that area. And yeah. we went to Locust Grove many times, and I know there used to be an old stomp ground around Locust Grove. Uh, yeah. One of the original stomp grounds, I believe, in, in the, that early nation. Um, so, um, how long have you been an artist? 
Well, I guess uh, I could always draw. I guess everybody has a kind of a gift that they could, that they, certain things that they have a knack for. Have a, and I, I was always able to draw and, but, uh, and do things with my hands, but it wasn't until I got a little older that I actually pursued it because I didn't think you could actually probably make a living at it or anything like that. It's, it's a kind of arts are a tough way to go. It is. So I took drafting in high school and, and took uh, something a little more practical. But um, I'm of the age I was drafted in Vietnam, drafted during the Vietnam era. So after I was fortunate to come back uh, unharmed or anything. And uh, after when I went to school on the GI Bill and I started taking some art courses with uh, and I, I was kind of, I guess, like fish to water. I, I, mm. I did very well, and, and I, it was enjoyable, so I just kind of changed directions huh. and uh, ended up getting a degree in art and, uh, and uh, had a dream of doing this full time, even though it's, I did it on the side forever. And uh, little by little, it was my way of kind of learning about my heritage also and paying tribute to, uh, to other, other people and other tribes. And so a lot of my work is a, more of a personal journey mm -hmm. of people and places that I've been, things that I've met. I do some things that are uh, Chalagi, they're, they're, they're Cherokee, but in general, it's uh, things that have influenced me, you know, and uh, try to make it authentic and real and honest as possible. Well, thank you for serving, for one. And um, your work, I guess I knew your work way before I got to finally meet you because I uh, would see it on a lot of posters or T-shirts and yeah. at powwows and you just, it's fantastic. Well, thank it's you, I, I, I sure appreciate it. Uh, well, it, to be able to do it for a long time and um, I've had a lot of help. I've had a lot of help and support from my family and uh, especially when I first started doing it, when I decided I wanted to do more native art, even though I did other types of art when I first started out. But when I first started doing native art and it, I, I would bring things that I, after I had a piece or something I was working on, and I'd show it to my family, my father, my grandmother, and my dad. Mm -hmm. And even though, you know, they're, what are they gonna say to their son? You know, they're always gonna try to encourage and say positive things, but yet I, I would, always wanted them to be proud of what I was doing because this is, reflection on them too, not just me, you know. And so you wanted something that, uh, but, but I've been able to uh, do this for a long time, have a lot of experiences. Uh, I've, uh, people have seen my work and over the years uh, helped me out and uh, en encouraged me and um, from a lot of different, from the real humblest type of things, the street shows and any, anywhere you can mm -hmm. have your work to, uh, uh, bigger galleries and, and uh, bigger shows too, and but uh, when I, when I see it, your your artwork, um, the the colors are so vibrant and and they just jump out. And to me, that's what Cherokees. Um, mm. That's the piece of the Cherokee too. And a lot of their artwork, their their the the clothes that they embroider and, and work on, they're very colorful. Yeah. And, and your artwork just um, dignifies that and, and you know, it's, it's Cherokee. Uh, well, you know, uh, color has a, has a way of uh, uh, striking an emotion if it's done right. You know, there, there's that fine line of kind of making something very powerful and making it gaudy. You know, mm -hmm. But you know when you see it, you can tell, but, but uh, like work that, that's, that has uh, a skill or by hand and everything, but then maybe if it has a, uh, an idea behind it that uh, makes a connection with, with the people that are looking at it and the viewer uh, or story to tell, that, that's even more, you know, more intriguing or, or a little bit more. But, but I consider myself a practicing artist. I you always, whatever you're working on, you, you think, well, that one's gonna be the next whatever but yet you don't know until you, you uh, finish it. Or, or, and it really reflects the state of mind you're in too. It's funny how it does when you're doing even, and people can see it. So it's, uh, it's kind of an honest expression of, uh, of, of what you're doing and everything. And, uh, and what types of artwork have you done over the years? Well, over the, over the years, initially, when I first started doing in, in school, just trying to learn the craft, trying to be a painter, you know? Yeah. So I was, at the time, 
date myself a little bit, but in the 70s, photorealism was a big art movement. So at first I didn't really kind of identify myself as a native artist. Uh, I, I, I knew, so I would try to emulate and try to learn from the tricks uh, or the skills and the visual of uh, photorealism and the technical part of it. It was just really dramatic and it was a lot of before um, Proposition 13, a lot of things around here, there was a lot of uh, world-class exhibits. And then you get a little older and you have a little more experiences and you, and you start, I started using photographs from powwows and people that I met in the Bay Area and other natives. Mm -hmm. And I would incorporate them in my work uh, and to try to make them and then still have that kind of full realistic quality. And then a few years, maybe it's been 15 years ago or so, but I've been thinking about using color, color to be more uh, using the same traditional ideas and, and traditional themes, but yet using them in a little more contemporary and a little more dramatic with, way with color. And so after I started doing a few of those and then uh, I, I got, uh, with a, it was a large gallery in, in Santa Fe, New Mexico that uh, spotted my work that was specialized in bright color. So it was at a time that I wanted to make some changes for it and so I worked with them for a while and uh, I found out that there was, you know, there was a connection and people did respond to it. And, uh, and I, I enjoy the creative part of that, you know, using color and using things a little bit more unique. And sometimes it's uh, a little trickier than it looks sometimes, but uh, uh, we all put our own barriers up of what we can and can't do. It We're all our own difficult. worst critics, you know. <laughs> so, and then after you've done something for a while, you, you realize, and then, well, why did it take me so long to get to that point? But things happen in life for reasons that are way beyond, you know. So are you the type, excuse me, are you the type of artist that would, okay, you're in your color phase now. Maybe yeah. I'm just kind of paraphrasing. Well, but sure. you have done other types of artwork, and there's gonna come a point possibly where are you just gonna shut down on the color and, and move on who to knows? another medium? Yeah, you don't who, know. Who knows, really? You know, you you, you try to exhaust it as as, as kind of as long as you, you think you can. Uh, as far as like a variation on a theme, a variation on an idea, and uh, you don't want to be when you start repeating yourself and start running out of ideas, or when you start thinking that you're in a rut, whatever that is, and everybody's different, every circumstance is different. So when you get to that point, then you need to you know, try something. Because as an artist, or a, anybody that's creative, to keep the creative process going is the ha hardest thing. However long it, you know, you're doing it, whether it's a few weeks or years or whatever, but, and everybody's different. So what it, whatever it takes in order to keep the enjoyment, the wow. challenge, you know, the newness, whatever that is but you, you, know, you can see it in the work of, of a person that does stuff. Did you yeah. have them at Indian Market Days in Santa Fe? Uh, I've been fortunate to do that for about 17 years. Wow, and you have yeah. to be invited for that, don't you? Well, that you have is, to be yeah. juried yeah. every year, and that's kind of crazy <laughs> that this is um, uh, the first year that before they had a system in which you know, it's been going on for uh, 95, I think this is the 95th year and um, now they, they eliminated the the ten year system to where once you got oh, okay. you know already you, you didn't have to be juried and we uh, the artists always complain about being juried because you always have to show them new work, but yet in the long run that makes the quality higher mm -hmm. it chal it keeps you on your, hopefully on kind of on your toes and keeps you p challenging yourself and pushing and uh, and so that's that's impressive. They only have the best art well, there. Well, <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, time like talk, talking about time marching on and things too. That uh, uh, 15 years, uh, seven, uh, 16 years ago, I guess I got to feel like a big shot on the weekend because I I won the the poster contest that year. Oh, it was a national yeah. contest. Really. And so they got to uh, uh, make. T-shirts and post and uh -huh. you know posters and all the other things related to that, and then you donate. But part of the conditions of the the contest was you take the original and you donate it. Um, 
to the auction it off to raise money for the show as a fundraiser. Uh, and then that was, uh, that was exciting and fun and, you know, kind of oh, crazy, wow. but because yeah. uh, there's, so mm -hmm. there's so many talented people. There's so many talented people. So who have been the influences on your artwork? Earlier, earlier on, they were photorealists uh, and uh, um, like um, Robert Bechtel and um, Mel Ramos. Uh, and then when I get a little bit later on, uh, and James Bama too, it was a real technical. And then with the color, John, the uh, guy John Nieto, he's a really, really well known native artist up from Santa Fe. And uh, so you try to kind of encapsulate or try to do your thing, but yet every time you kind of make a change, it's always kind of fun and scary at the same time, you know, because you know when you change, there's going to be a certain group of people that will identify with what you were trying to say or how you did it before in traditional work. And you're going to maybe they're not going to like, but yet, and when you change to, there'll be an, another newer group to that say, well, you know, you're capturing this, mm -hmm. this, but you have to al also be kind of be honest with yourself. Why are you doing this? You know, you, you're doing this because you still want to have joy and excitement and challenge to your work. And uh, even though you maybe start out like John Nieto's type of stuff, then you hopefully you say, well, you, you, that's the starting point. Then you're trying to take it further to say something with it that's unique to you and your way of doing it and your experiences. So, who knows? Now this fo this picture drawing, what do you call them? You call them drawings, I guess, portraits. Yeah, well, this <laughs> is sure. kind of a portrait. Can you, know, you tell kind of tell us about that and what yeah, inspired you is, when uh, you did it? It's, it's pretty straightforward. It's called Fancy Dancer, uh -huh. but it, it's from my uh, f actually a photograph, the original model kind of that I used was from a photograph I took uh, years ago uh, of a, a native, uh, his name is Val Shadowhawk. He, oh, yeah. he lives in uh, Sacramento and uh, this was at the um, uh, Three Rivers, little Three Rivers right. powwow over there in uh, Manteca. Uh -huh. And I've, I've known Val for a while and everything. So I came, later I came back and the originals is three quarter life size. It's a good size piece, you know, that and everything. But I wanted to, to show the movement, the color, and, and um, it, it was, uh, I was real happy with the way. It, I had it's a big one, mm -hmm. one person show at, uh, at the Waxlander Gallery in Santa Fe years ago. Uh, and this was the show piece that was in Southwest Art Magazine and, uh, and the postcards they hand out and stuff. So I was real, that you know, real, real happy with the way it kind of came out. This one on my right? The one on the right is called Hear My Prayer. It's uh, a, also from another photograph that I took up at uh, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho years ago. I was an invited artist to a big art show and powwow together put on by the Coeur d'Alene tribe called Jalamish. Mm -hmm. And um, to start out the whole festivities, they had a horse parade. Uh, and, and then this was uh, one, the lead, one of the lead riders. Uh, um, his name is Gary Burke. He's the tribal chief of the Umatilla tribe mm. over there uh, by the Columbia River, Pendle Pendleton, Oregon, that area. And um, so I wanted to show something a little more spiritual. I actually have done three different versions of that particular pose. Uh, one, cause the other ones are a little more realistic, but out of all the ones that I've done, this one I, I think captured something a little more unique and hopefully a little more spiritual than um, uh, than the others and uh, you know it's uh, but it's funny how it works sometimes sometimes you'll have an idea to do something and it just kind of flows and uh, like this one was kind of that way and then but I got right to the towards the end and there was not quite you know you you didn't know what was wrong or you didn't know if there is anything but you know you weren't quite happy and, and sometimes you just put it away and some things in your life you, you know if you dream about it or what happens then you get an idea to uh, complete what you're looking for. But uh, it's, it's all right for me, but I drive my wife crazy. Because I'll, <laughs> sometimes I'll have a piece and, I'm be and then I'll rework this one little whatever. And, but that's, that's what art is for me. It's, it's my little universe that I have control of, or my vision of things. 
and because there's most of the things in the world are you just deal with and you're part of. And so this is my little contribution to, uh, you know, what, what a little gift I think I, I have. Do, do you have a message in your artwork? Well, I, I think it's uh, part of it is to, to be honest with yourself and to uh, try to, I try to posit, to uh, express and show Native America, Native America in a good light, in a positive light. And even though I'm a child of the 60s and someone that's no social protest and no, and there's in the time and place for all of that. But I, my place I think is to show with my work, uh, the positive strength, the vision, the intelligence, and uh, you know, the, even the humor sometimes of, of native people visually. And, and that's what I, I, I try to do. Well, you know, it's always kind of falls short a lot of times, but uh, at least you try to keep in your back of your mind that you, uh, you know, you're honest with, with people and, and, and you uh, do them justice. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Have you noticed any differences between, say, the people in Oklahoma, uh, uh -huh. the people that are traditional and live yeah. there, and then the urbanized oh, um, sure, sure. Cherokees? And I, I guess, sure. and I kind of walk the both worlds. Yeah, that, sure, sure. Well, I think anybody that's trying to keep the culture alive in the 21st century that's a real traditional, like the native culture, uh, traditionally based. Uh, it's it's a fine line that that you walk, you know. That uh, I'm a little more comfortable with some of the newer things. But so much of my art, you know, that was so traditional for over 25, 30 years, which is never anything wrong with it. But it's like uh, you want to try to express another part of yourself that your personal experiences that you separate yourself because you're over here on the West Coast and the, you've seen things and done things that are different. Um, but I also, and I, I always think too about, I'd like to learn through my art about more of the traditional ways of the Cher Cherokee or, or, mm -hmm. or a tribal myths and legends and lores and show them you know, through the artwork too. So you know, there's always the kind of the constant but that's one thing about art too, this type of thing, it's a lifelong process. You know, you, you never get there. Yeah. You know, and you're always trying, hopefully you're always learning and you're always uh, uh, keeping it going as long as you can. Can you well, tell, this, yeah. this piece looks pretty traditional. Could you tell us a little bit? Yeah, of that one's from uh, my trip up to uh, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Uh, we were talking about the big uh, powwow called Jalimish that start, mm. And then this is, uh, my rendition of the horse parade, one of the horse parades. Um, the piece was actually, it, the original was a little bit larger than this. Is a, 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 an acrylic was an acrylic, it's like a thick watercolor. But I tried to show the uh, traditional tribes and the Northern Plains tribes, the, the Umatilla, the, um, the Blackfeet, the Cayuse, uh, and the Crow, there were, from three little photographs, that I, I, or three years of photographs I took on my little inexpensive camera, and then I came back later and put the writers together. Uh, uh, oh, really? So you take the photographs first, and then from yeah, that you... Yeah, you know, I came back later, and uh, I tried to capture them pretty much the, the, uh, the regalia that they had on, the type of thing, to, to make it almost more historical than it is, you know, kind of an art, art type of piece. And, um, and to see the horses and the, and the horse people and uh, the, uh, there's just really uh, breathtaking, you know, the traditional regalia, the beadwork that you don't see, you hardly, you know, ever, and uh, mm. especially around here, and uh, there are traditions that the families uh, have. Um, uh, it, it, it was, I, I would just really, I was invited artist for uh, over 10, 12 years uh, there, and uh, went on for a long time, and it was, um, a wonderful experience. The people uh, treated us, my wife and I, and uh, like family, mm -hmm. and everything. Uh, so it's beautiful. Well, thank you. Thank but you. you know, I also want to thank you for giving to the community because you did four beautiful, beautiful drawings that you gave to the American 
Heritage Celebration Committee mm -hmm. for four years of uh, events. So we had them as our um, postcards and our yep. T-shirts, and they're just gorgeous. We well, couldn't decide you. which thank one you. to do first. They were just yeah. outstanding. Well, it, you know, it's my, you know, uh, I've had a lot of great experiences through through my artwork with people and places I've been, and, you know, we all have to do our part to give back to to uh, people and that have helped us and, and contributed to us, and uh, it's my only, my one way of sharing and, uh, and uh, helping out the little things that I can that it, uh, uh, I've been fortunate to have my work uh, on the uh, Pow Wow calendar and the Bay Area Pow Wow calendar right, for I've seen it there. forever, for a long time. Uh, I used to work with uh, Vern, Vern Roberts and uh, Laverne. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, a lot of different, little different things that it, uh, the Indian Health Center, or not the Indian Health Center, but the um, Indian Centers in Oakland, mm -hmm. Intertribal, one of the first Friendship, Friendship House. Yeah, I, I did a calendar to cover from them. <sighs> yeah, I've seen your work way, here and there. Way, way back, <laughs> yeah, way back. And, uh, and Michael Smith through the I Indian um, Film Festival. Oh, yes. I did a cover for them years huh. ago and everything, too. And uh, it's, it's nice to, uh, and my, I've just, recently been uh, um, given a, a nice uh, opportunity to uh, have my work for the uh, California Indian uh, Legal Services. Mm -hmm. They have their big 50th uh, anniversary celebration in Sacramento in September. And uh, they saw my work uh, and uh, they're gonna use that as a big poster to advertise. Uh, their uh, festivities in Sacramento and uh, w was, you know, it was, it's always nice to, when you're, when you're, for people to acknowledge your, uh, your contributions or your, your work and uh, when you don't have to personally <laughs> knock on their doors right. and all that. Cause well, we were so proud yeah. to have your work on our oh, uh, posters this past, the last few years. And thank you so much for being here and joining us and sharing your well. Thank very you for having me. It's beautiful always, talent it's with been, us. It's uh, been an honor uh, to be able to uh, to represent and uh, native well my the, my family and uh, and help out with uh, what I could. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank for you for joining us. Like us on Facebook. We'll see you next week on Native Voice TV.